Hello everyone and welcome back to Kenny Conversation brought to you by Jags, the leader in high performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to jags.com and as Uncle Rusty says, to fix your hot rod up. <laughs> Why Uncle Rusty? Because that's all my kids call him. You know, it's the family and it's his nickname around our family, Uncle Rusty. So this is a, a series and we don't know how many of these we're going to do, but we're on our second one. You had an incredible career. You ran a lot of NASCAR races. You're in the Hall of Fame. You're a champion. You've truly done it all. And you did it the right way. You controlled your own chassis. Uh, you basically started. You helped Roger Penske start Penske South. And I believe Penske is what it is today because of you. So where this story's going is, and you're going to tell it, but in the mid-90s, a phone company gets a hold of you because they want to see if their GPS works. Tell the story about when you went to Talladega. That's pretty correct what you just said, but, <laughs> but Winston went away. Okay. And Nextel was the new sponsor for NASCAR. Phone. The phone guys, Nextel. Okay, yeah. that was a new sponsor. So I get a phone call about six months into the new contract uh, that we're racing about six months into the year now with the Nextel Cup Series, okay? Mm. And they said, we want to start broadcasting the driver's communications to a tower, then from the tower down to, the, to all the fans and the grandstands. And we want you to drive around the racetrack above 200 miles per hour to prove that the signals can transfer back and forth quick enough to do that correctly. And I said, okay. And back then, you gotta remember the cars were running like 192 miles an hour. That's all they were running with the restrictor plate, okay? Yeah. So they said, okay, well, they asked me if I would do it. I said, yeah, we'll do it. So they asked Team Penske if they would. Do it. So at that time, I don't wanna belabor the point, but when big companies like that or NASCAR or automotive tests, you know, the Ford test, what, what make were you running at that time? Do you remember? Oh, was that make? It was, a, it was a Ford. Okay, so. Whether it's Chevy, whether it's Ford, you, you got to feel full of pride. Ford, big sponsor coming in, they want you to do it. You didn't, you didn't shy away from it. Well, I don't know if that's full of pride or not. It was just a question they came across. I mean, all the drivers were getting requests from everybody to do different things. I just happened to get a request from uh, Team Penske got a request. I guess what I mean is you didn't say, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Oh no, I mean, I wanted to do it. I said, okay, it's, it, it, it was a simple test too. Yeah. Because, you know, I took the truck driver, Myself and Earl Barman. That's it. Three of you? Three of us. Team Penske prepared the car to put it on the truck and blew us down there. Me and Earl jumped on my airplane. We flew down there. We fired that thing up, warmed it up. Earl Barman, Jimmy Johnson spotter, is from St. Louis. So Earl. Earl, yeah. Well, yeah, Earl, Earl Barman. Earl's my sponsor in my whole career. Yeah, he was And yeah. then when I retired at the end of 2005, he went to, for, went to work for Jimmy Johnson and went on to be his sponsor for his seven championships, yeah. okay? Okay, so you so, three go down there. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> me and her were tight, a real tight, we still are. Yeah. And so those guys said, okay, go on down there and do it. And so we send the truck driver down there with the car. We get, we fly the plane down, we get out, we end up helping the truck driver, we unload the car, we fire it up, we warm it up, we plug the oil in, get it all done, because the car was, I mean, to drive around Teledag at 190 mile an hour is pretty easy, okay? Yeah. It really is, but, because we have restricted plates. All they wanted us to do is run four or five laps above 200 mile an hour. Yeah. Two, right at 200 or above. So we fire the thing up, I go out there, run up, I run, what I run? I run 194 miles an hour. We come in and put a different restrictor plate on. Car runs 199.8. Said, okay. And I said, we gotta go faster, we gotta go over 200. I said, okay, put another restrictor. Now NASCAR's there. Had Buster Otten and a couple other guys there. So they come to me and said, man, you're not going to believe this. I said, what's wrong? We screwed up and left the dong on restrictor plates back in Hickory, North Carolina. We don't have a bigger restrictor plate. So the only restrictor plate they had, the car would run 199.8. Okay. This is what, this is why we're doing this. Because, yeah, we're trying to figure out the next thing you're going to so say. No it, restrictor plates. So as redneck as it was, that's what happened. <laughs> We just forgot the rest of the restricted plates to make it go a little faster, maybe over maybe 201 or 202. So we don't have it. I said, well, just take the damn thing off. Take oh the restricted plate clear off. And they went, oh, Rusty, we don't know if we can do that. I said, come on. 
look, you're, it's, there's nobody around. We're not testing. We're not competing. Let's just get this test done for these guys. Okay. Yeah. They took that restrictor plate off. I went out there. And I thought I was in second gear leaving the pits instead of being in third gear. So I downshifted a car because this thing's in third gear. And it's screaming. It's turning. I mean, it's wound up. Pull that baby back in high gear. I come ripping down the back straightaway. I come down the front straightaway. I come down the front straightaway 221 miles an hour. Were you scared? Getting up to speed. No, I knew I was really flying. I come back around. That damn thing come off at turn three. It goes down the front straightaway at the start finish line. It goes into complete uh, hybrid plane mode. No. I got the front wheels turned. And the front end's got lift in it, and it slid from the bottom of the track all the way up to the wall, and that thing crossed the damn spark finish line at 242 miles an hour. Oh my gosh. So I come in, I come in, I said, oh my God, I can't even drive this thing. So Earl and I put two spring rubbers in the back of the rear springs that jacked the ass in our car up. Then we took the front fenders, and we pulled the fenders out like three quarters of an inch on each side to get some downforce back to the front end. Yeah. We bolted four tires on that thing. I went back out, flew around there one more lap, it ran 234, then it ran 241, and I felt the vibration. And I throttled back at 241 mile and, and come down, and in two laps, it ripped all the rubber off the right front tire. It was going that damn fast that it ripped the rubber off the tires. So, this is what everybody wants to know. Uh, and, and Okay, that's an unbelievable story. I cannot add to that. But we always heard of of, you know, Dale Sr., you know, the man in black, uh, take the restrictor plates off, drop the rag. You just explained why that was impossible. Yeah, the cars are aerodynamically unstable to run that speed. Let's put it this way. That era of car, yeah. that era of car, yeah. would, you, no way you could do that. Yeah. That car, 200 mile per hour was its max to be aerodynamically stay, aerodynamically stable. Yeah. I proved that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even turn the wheel. I was going so damn fast. I was lifting the front end. And in two laps, that you're saying the tires were, were gone. Okay. It, ripped, it ripped the tires off. It ripped the rubber off the tires. Yeah. And Goodyear uh, probably couldn't make a tire. And if they did, it'd have to be built like a truck. There'd be a lot. And, and there's no reason. Okay, let's change the subject a little bit. If we're putting on a show at 200 mile an hour, why do we need to go 240 or 220? Well, you, the fan really can't tell that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. You don't need to go that speed, you know. To put it on a good race. I absolutely proved to myself that day. I came in off the track. I, my first guy to the window was Earl. I looked at Earl and said, you know what? Now you know and now I know why you can't race these things over right. 200 miles an hour because it's a stock car. It's not designed to be around 40 other cars swap, swarping all over the place. Hell, currently, what are we at right now? 2024 right yeah. now. Daytona 5 just 100. Daytona 500 just happened. They had, they had a lot of wrecks. It was a great race, a lot of wrecks. Oh my, can you imagine yeah. 240 mile an hour? Yeah, they'd be out of the They'd be like park. pinballs. They'd be outside they, the racetrack. They, they'd look like Lee Petty in, in one of the first days. They, they'd be out, out in the ticket booth outside. To yeah, the so the look, bottom line, to, to wrap this thing up, I realized that we couldn't run that speed, but we did it. So, and we proved it. And I think, I, well, I, I, I know, we were probably one of the fastest stock cars in the planet still to this day. Yeah, so... Uh, there's a lot of documentaries out there, people voicing over, giving their opinion, but now we know the details. Um, yeah. Three of you, Penske Racing just says, go on down or do what they need. You get down there, it's three of you. Now you, you don't have a restrictor plate. Now this story just keeps building and building. And uh, before you know it, you, you realize that uh, at, at what point, well, let's end it like this. Was it a day later? Was it an hour later? When did you realize that this story has become... I mean, today the story still lives on. Uh, did you realize it was as big as a story as it was? Well, that, that day when we left, I really felt like we did something that was miraculous that it just, we accidentally backed into. Yeah. We didn't know we were going to do that, and it happened, you know? I remember Earl going back going, oh, my God, and me going back going, oh, my God. Yeah. And like, wow, we just can't... It just. And Team Penske and Don Miller and the guys just set us down to a skeleton crew, you know. And you do that. We knocked that out and we loaded up and we come home, you know. 
And I said, dude, you're not gonna believe this. That thing ran 242 mile an hour. Yeah. And back then, those cars were making about 750 horsepower. Yeah. Man, at the end of 05, before they wanted all these new rules stuff, our NASCAR motors were making about 950. Wow. I mean, my That's a lot of power. My qualifying motor for the Coke 600 was 950 horsepower. I scream it. And I turned the thing 10,300 RPM. That's another story. The inside of that motor, <laughs> and, and that will be down the road. That's way down the road. That's way down the road. But, but now, uh, as we end this, we realize how many great stories there are. These, these are rusty, all the stories, but these are also moments in the sport that change the sport. And we'll do, we're going to do something on this one, but you won the Buddy Schumann Trophy, and that's because of your contribution to the sport. This, this trophy means a lot to you, and, and that's going to be another story because of your contribution to the sport. Now we're, we're kind of reminding why, you know, the, the all-star race. You run 240 mile an hour and more and more. But um, all right, well, remember, mm -hmm. Bill Elliott ran 212 miles per hour in 1985. And that, to this day, that is the fastest qualifying NASCAR record. In 1985, Bill Elliott ran 212. And that's the fastest. Hold on. <laughs> May not be official. Wasn't it in qualifying trim at a NASCAR points race? But you definitely went faster. What a story, bro. Well, but Bill Elliott, if he had to take the restrictor plate off, he'd have went 240 also. Yeah. Okay, so, so, but I just got to do this accidentally. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, everybody. Remember, we always remind you all, like and subscribe. And we are in podcast form on the way to work. Listen to Rusty on iTunes or Spotify, and the same thing when you get off work on the way home. Until the next show.